Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Bible study series. Today we are in 2 Kings chapter 23. We are three chapters away from the end of the book of 2 Kings. We've got an interesting chapter today, a lot to cover, so we'll try to be as quick as possible to keep this as close to five minutes as we can. We need to talk about three kings and where they exist in history. We're going to talk about Josiah, who we talked about in the last chapter, then his sons Jehoahaz and Jehoiakim, more kings with J names. These guys reigned within the window from about 640 to 597 BC. Let's talk more about those three kings and one other king in our character section. First, we have Josiah. He was the son of Ammon, who took the throne of Judah after his father. He became king when he was just eight years old. And he was a man who respected God and tried to restore God's law in Judah after it had been neglected for a really long time. We're going to talk about Pharaoh Necho. Pharaoh Necho. We haven't talked about a pharaoh in quite a while. He was the king of Egypt, and he oppressed the people of Judah for a good bit of time after the reign of Josiah. Now we have Jehoahaz. Jehoahaz was one of Josiah's sons who reigned for a very short period of time in Judah. Pharaoh Necho captured him and took him to Egypt, and he died in Egypt. Now another one of Josiah's sons named Eliakim, who's better known as Jehoiakim. This is Josiah's son who was put on the throne by Pharaoh Necho, and Pharaoh Necho changed his name from Eliakim to Jehoiakim. <laughs> Hopefully you can keep all those straight. As far as the really important locations in this chapter, first of all, we have Jerusalem, which was the capital of Judah. We will talk some about Egypt, where Pharaoh reigned. And we also need to talk about Megiddo. Megiddo was a city a little bit farther north than Jerusalem. This is where Josiah was killed. You should probably go back and read chapter 22 if you haven't already, because in chapter 22, something really significant happened. Josiah was fixing up the temple in Jerusalem, and he found a book of God's laws, the laws that God gave to Moses. We're going to talk about that in our first section. The first section is verses 1 through 20. Josiah purges Judah and the old kingdom of Israel of idolatry. So after finding the book of God's laws in the temple, Josiah gathered all the people of the nation and of Jerusalem together, and he read them the entire book so that they would know the laws as well. Josiah and all the, all the people made a promise to God that they were going to keep his commands to the best of their ability. So we go from like Hezekiah, who was good, Manasseh, who was really bad. Now we're going to Josiah. He's restoring the law again. Josiah purged the temple and the land of all idols and idol worship. He burned the idols and he fired the idolatrous priests. He got rid of them and he'll do even more than that. We'll read in a little bit. Unauthorized altars were destroyed and the practice of child sacrifice was forbidden, which had been practiced during the days of King Manasseh. He destroyed the altar that was in Bethel, which Jeroboam, who if you remember, he was the very first king of Israel, had built in Bethel as an alternative to worshiping the right way at the temple in Jerusalem. He didn't want his people to go south to Jerusalem, and so he built an altar in Bethel. Now finally, all these years later, that altar is destroyed. Now there's a really interesting detail that's given to us in this chapter, and it's the fulfillment of a prophecy that had been given many years before. So Josiah took human bones out of the tombs and he burned them on the idolatrous altars, which would have defiled those altars. His actions fulfilled a prophecy that had been given centuries before he was actually even born. You can read the prophecy in 1 Kings chapter 13 and verse 2. You may remember it if you have a really good memory from when we did that chapter. That was quite a while ago, 1 Kings chapter 13. The prophecy actually names Josiah, gives his, his specific name, even though it was spoken 300 years before the events of 2 Kings chapter 22. And it's a powerful proof of the Bible's inspiration. So him burning these bones on these altars is the fulfillment of that prophecy that this sin that Jeroboam had, had committed would be fixed by a guy named Josiah. Josiah extended his purge of idolatry into the north, into the former kingdom of Israel. He killed the idolatrous priests and he burned their bones on their own altars. In verses 21 through 30, we're going to see Josiah keeping the Passover feast and leaving a godly legacy in Judah. Josiah commanded that all of the people keep the Passover memorial. This memorial, if you remember, was supposed to be kept every single year. I don't think that had always been done, though. It was instituted by God when he led the people of Israel 
out of Egypt. The Passover feast was held in Josiah's 18th year as king, and the text says that there was not a Passover that was comparable to it since the time of the judges of Israel, which was several centuries before this. Josiah was all in all, a very righteous king. He followed the Lord with all of his heart and all of his soul, according to verse 25. However, Josiah's righteousness didn't quench God's anger against Judah. You remember in the last chapter, God had said that because of the sins of Manasseh, he was going to punish Judah. He was going to give them over into the hands of their enemies. Well, that still wasn't going to change, even though Judah had done all of these reforms. So in the near future, we're going to see Judah being conquered and taken out of their land, taken captive. Now, they will return eventually, if you know the story, but for a while, they're going to be kicked out of the promised land. Josiah's life ends a little bit later when he's killed on the battlefield with, uh, he's killed by Pharaoh Necho of Egypt, and his son Jehoahaz took his place as king of Judah. The final section of this very busy chapter, verses 31 through 37, Pharaoh Necho and the reign of Jehoahaz and Jehoiakim. Jehoahaz reigned for only three months in Judah after his father's death. He was an evil king. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He was captured, as we mentioned, by Pharaoh Necho, and he was taken to Egypt, and that's where he would die. Pharaoh Necho made another one of Josiah's sons the king in his place, and that was Eliakim. And as I mentioned, he changed his name to Jehoiakim. And that's generally how he's uh, better known. Jehoiakim reigned for 11 years, and he did, quote, what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So he wasn't any better than his brother. The people of Judah were very heavily taxed and oppressed by Pharaoh Necho in Egypt during Jehoiakim's reign. And so that's where we're going to leave Judah in chapter 23. We'll pick up in a very significant chapter in chapter 24, Lord willing, tomorrow. So now let's go down to our application and talk about something we can learn from Josiah's actions, even in the face of Judah's destiny. Don't let the things that you can't change keep you from taking action to fix the things that you can. Josiah couldn't change the fate of Judah. Judah's destiny had been sealed by the wicked men who reigned before him, but he made Judah a godlier place during the years that he was on the throne. The application for us is that you aren't going to be able to fix every problem in our broken world, and you're not going to be able to fix every problem that you see in the church, but don't let that paralyze you into inaction. With God's help, you can work towards solutions to some of those needs, and you can fix some of those things. You are not responsible for fixing the entire world. That is Jesus' job, and he will do it in the end. But let's do what we can to make the world a godlier place during our lifetimes.